listening to Jan Talk. Go. We in the jungle, baby. Number one. <clears throat> yo, 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 this is your boy Mike J with the J Talk Podcast. I'm just fucking around. Yo, 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 <laughs> it's your boy Mike J with the J Talk Podcast. I got Groovy Drew, I got Trav, I got Keisha. Shell's not with us today. She'll be back on the next episode. Today, we're going to talk about social influencers. So, how fucked up they are these days and how they <laughs> be hindering people's, you know, social life and shit. So, so anybody want to talk about it and want to pop it off? Pop it off, pop it off. Then, first, anybody, anybody. Shit. All I know is you used to be motherfuckers be on social media and then they just be listening to what people be, you know, other people's opinions. Like, if you like, if niggas who like flats instead of wings, they some bum ass niggas. Or if you doing this for your girl, who is your girl, and you trying to be faithful, you a lame ass nigga. And then niggas just take that shit to heart and they start moving different and it fucks up their social life. Y'all do. Hmm? Both. What I told about it, man, it's both. We eat on equal. But look, so what we, man, I think. Uh, it's it, it's it's just ruined society. Period. Not just influence, but the whole setup. Because people, it's just like what they say. You say TV ruining people. It's like social media, so social, social media ruining people now. So people don't know what right, what wrong. What we what we brought up on what's right is is it's wrong now. If you average, you you, you that mean you you pretty much damn near the scum, the bottom bottom feeders. So people going out, spending a lot of money on stuff you can't afford, put yourself in debt and try to live a lifestyle that a lot of times those people ain't even living. And shit, like, y'all, yeah, um, I don't know if y'all watched American Horror Story, but that, not the last episode, the episode for last, it was basically, that was about, like, that what the horror story was, social media, and how uh, <laughs> it affected I'm people's lives. Huh? I'm going to have to look at that. Yeah, you got to look at that episode, like, how that shit that shows how what people will do what link and um extent people will go to just for likes and be social media famous like yeah we see it every day now people like man that's why people don't care people don't have no more and shit like let me no. get a look people want to be famous people don't want to be rich that's a big yeah. problem yeah. Everybody popular don't nobody want to get money for real everybody want things just handed to them because they're well known and that's just a fucked up way to live. We're in a, what you be saying? We're in a fuck cluster. Who be saying that? When <laughs> that said that. Am I? <laughs> shit, who said that shit? Nah, they motherfuckers just be like, they just trying to get clout. And then they just try to do everything well. Like motherfuckers, like back in the day when motherfuckers used to watch anime. Now everybody want to jump on anime. Like everybody's not comfortable with themselves. Everybody, social media makes people feel uncomfortable with themselves or what they like and all that shit. And you should just enjoy what you like. And all that, and don't let other people's opinions change how you feel about your life or you know your desires and shit. Cause motherfuckers will try to bring your ass down. And that's why this about anime. I'm sorry to cut you off. Can we clear something up about anime for real? What's up about anime? Because I, you're the second person that's brought that up. Like, yeah, everybody's trying to get on anime now. This, that, and third. Everybody that's like watching anime and like that grew up on anime. I don't if you if you're listening to this and you're an anime fan, I think y'all need to really understand because they like people had problems with them back in the day. They were bullied or whatever, this and that, the third. People didn't like them or whatever. They thought they were weird. The thing about it is we didn't give a fuck that you watched anime back in the day. I promise you. A lot of us didn't give a fuck that you watched anime. What bothered us was the the, the weird shit that you would do. That you saw off of anime, like that running through the hallway shit. That shit was like, come on, come on. That's that's some niggas in, in the early two thousands. Like, yeah, like, 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 but you ain't gotta be doing all that weird ass shit. And then you expect people to treat you just like normal, knowing damn well you done did this crazy ass sprint across me. Why like, you scared the fuck out of me, bro? Like, what the fuck? 
But I'm sure. sorry, I didn't clear that up about anime watchers because they really like on our ass. Like people ain't like me because I watch anime. No, people didn't like you because you used to stare at them evilly across the fucking lunchroom. Come on now, chill out. Well, yeah, that, that's a that's a different thing, but motherfuckers doing all that sprint shit. They did their shit back in the early 2000s. That was that Naruto shit. But, exactly. Exactly. But, no, they were doing that. They were doing that. Well, I was in high school in 2000, early 2000. So, yeah. No. Well, yeah. It is what it is. You trying to kill a fly, Drew? About the um the social influence. I don't know. Um, social media has taken our everyday lives and has broken it down to things that we don't even realize we think about or have to think about. And it's just almost stressful to even walk out the door. Like, seriously, if you don't wear this type of shoe, then you're this type of person. If we don't go on these days, then you're this type of person. If you ask for this, then you're this type of person. If you do that, then you're this type of person. If you clean your house with it's just absolutely ridiculous but what's even more ridiculous mm. is how this shit y'all be seeing on the internet and y'all really take it out on real life people real people yeah and i'm gonna ask y'all a dead serious question has social media changed y'all views on marriage mm. Not so, not social media. She just not um, social just, media. It so, just rea- the reality of it now. Like, because if if it was on social media, I mean everybody was supposed to be married within the, thir- the the first three to six months of meeting each other. Not talking it's about social that. media. Value <laughs> of marriage. Let me ask you this. Think about it. Before we were so engaged in social media, was having a wife something that you actually strongly considered? social media Breaking comes up. and it, it it actually gives you a front row seat into a lot of people's different personal lives and so you're seeing what all these different people are going through and it has shifted your thought process on a situation that you once at one point in time look forward to it was actually on your to-do list in life and now, mm. because of everything you're seeing that's going on with all these other people, all of the cheating, all of the side chicks, all of the, what is it, sneaky links, and all of the bullshit that people be exposing as far as their personal lives go, it has completely changed the way you look at marriage. That's the fucked up part about social media, because things that we want look forward to we have no desire for no more because we done got so many insight on so many people's personal lives mm. yeah yeah he'll show you the up front it's all in your face now everything's all in your face now and shit so everybody's overstimulating and shit so yeah. back then if you wasn't so overstimulated you know what i'm saying it built like excitement and everything nowadays the excitement for anything is just dead. So a lot of people are not excited to go like do a lot of stuff like they did back in the day. So everybody's too overstimulated. And when you get overstimulated, you just lose interest in shit. So yeah. everybody want their scrapping and shit. Like y'all remember day back in the day, we ain't just gonna trip for our birthday. Shit, we used to go on trip. We used to go trip on trip. Trap funny, bro. <laughs> That funny as shit, bro. Man, come on, go ahead. Man. <laughs> Try that funny, bro. Gonna... You put that bitch on me. We, oh, we got something like this. Oh, hey, back. <laughs> but yeah, no, back in, no, back then we like shit. <laughs> let me take that. Hey, let me take that. Oh. <laughs> Hey man, do all that. Eat like here. I'm sorry. Hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, back in the day, when we uh for the trips, like like everybody like the thing you do not take a trip for your birthday. I remember that like, ain't about like ten years ago. Shit, we just go out, like go to a club or something, just have a dinner and stuff. But now we gotta take a trip and do different shit. Like we're like now, it seems like we are. It's some kind of way everybody influenced influenced by social media. How your lifestyle? It don't change everybody's lifestyle in some kind of way. It's the wrong way. Like what social media has become 
I don't think that was his intention in the beginning. I really it's, don't. It's it's but truly like, like like I said on the man. It's truly a horror story now because people are never going to be happy with themse- with themselves anymore. Like that's why they think all these other reasons. It's the reason for like the suicide rates and depression rates going up. No, you know what the real ticket is? It's, just, it's social media. That was the, that what it really is. Hell you yeah. Got, because think about it. If you, I, it's, I, if somebody going through depression, I didn't tell them like if you on social media, delete delete it for like ten days. I promise you, are gonna start feeling better. But now, like that's why a lot of people they say, "Damn, I don't know why I'm so sad and shit." Like, but I know you might have other, other things going on. But once you you click on the apps, I'm like shit. My life ain't shit. And then people like you like a video, like people saying you ain't shit. Your life, what you got going on ain't shit. It just bro, heightens, heightens their depression and whatever they got going on. Like, man, you got to tell people, everybody ain't going to be rich. Everybody ain't going to be successful. Everybody ain't going to be super powerful, man. You got to learn to love yourself and, and realize what you got going on is great. Because we are, our problem, our generation, we always take stuff for granted. Like, we don't, we don't appreciate all goodness, all greatness, because we, we we still trying to compare it to other people and what other people got going on. We like we let too many people speak on our our blessing or influence our blessing instead of us just taking time to appreciate. It. So we you know what a lot of a lot of time what's going on now. And yeah. we're overly sharing our blessings, in my yeah. opinion. I honestly feel like. I, I, you know, I see it a lot. You know, if something great happens to you in your life and sharing it on social media. And I understand you want people to share your happiness, but to be honest and to be real, probably 90% of those people that you're sharing it to don't give a flying fuck that you just mm-hmm. bought care that you just got a car. They don't care that you just got married. They don't care that you just got proposed to. They don't even care that you just had a baby. They do mm-hmm. their life. They say congratulations and they keep it pushing. Yep. And a lot of people don't even be sincerely giving a damn. And so you're sharing your blessings with somebody who could be praying against you. Yeah. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. The mo- you know, I'm real funny about sharing stuff like that on my social media because like I said, you really don't know who be praying against you, who envies you who is fake happy for you and all of that. So I've always kind of been weary about stuff like that. And I, I, I'm not really judgmental of the people that do it, but it's some people that are kind of excessive with it, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? You ever came across, you? I know y'all got like that one Facebook friend where it seems like everything is just going great in their life. <laughs> Every yeah. other they're posting something great that's happening in life. I'm like, damn, man, you don't want to enjoy none of that shit to yourself, like for real. Yeah, yeah, you got, you got, you know what I'm saying? You got, you got, like, yeah, like, yeah, you got to keep a lot of shit to yourself, like, not a lot of shit. You want to share a little bit, but like, keep it to yourself, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like you said, you don't know who praying against you, you man, like, you don't know who, who trying to like put a spell or roots or anything yeah. on you and try to get you, kind of trying to turn your life upside down, man, because yeah, yeah. Like, like you don't know, like man, people. It's an evil people out here. People, people. You think people like some people that think think they're your your friends. Like, oh man, they rock me for real, but shit, and they cool me, man. They be like people do it all the time. They be telling you bad advice or putting bad stuff in your head. Like when you share it, like that's why I say you gotta be careful who you share your good news with. They're on or off social media because like you said people be praying against you, like. And they be waiting for you to fuck up and do something wrong. Then soon, soon as you do, soon they go wrong. They would say, "Well, I told you you should have did such and such," and they'll be the main one that will coach you to do the shit that led to something going wrong for you. Yeah, so, man, you got a lot of people. people. A lot of people are opportunists too, I and mean, you see, they see your blessings. Like, oh, I could. What can I do to come off of that or some shit like that? So, everybody just some people ain't for you, man. And a lot of people think they are. <laughs> But like you said yeah. with the social media, like if you like depressing all that, that really you really like if you keep on putting that like your depression also is like what you see. Like if you keep on listening to sad music, it's just gonna add on to your depression. If you keep on seeing sad shit to make you sad, it's gonna make you it's like you get into a cycle with your depression. So you gotta break that cycle. Cause if you keep on going through the same cycles and the same cycles, you just gonna keep on you just gonna um disintegrate and your brain's gonna deteriorate. Your emotions just gonna get bad, and you know that's what happens. 
because you be seeing this shit on TikTok where you see people filming themselves crying about they missing their love and all that shit. And then they be saying, I miss my baby and all that. And then you see people watching romantic shit and all that. Like, bro, yeah, go ahead shit. and do something. Because you consuming other people's lives. That's what you're doing. You're not living. You're watching other people living. Yep. That's so, the worst thing you can do. Like, I think they'll fuck us up. Like, back then, they ain't, people ain't had to worry about what I'm saying. Like, but I ain't got to look. Go on my phone, see everybody happy. The shit that made me sad. And these people enjoying what I wanted. So, like, that shit, that shit fuck up a lot. That's why I tell people, man, you're going through any kind of pressure. Just, just stay off your social media because you're going because that would that would like that. I think that's that's why we had facilities. You know what I'm saying? You come to these facilities, you can't, hey, you just there. You can't, hey, no access to nothing on the outside, especially not social media. Like, you call your family and stuff, but for our social media or your phone, like, you don't need that. People need to take a mental break. Like, just really like break away from everything. So yeah. To heal and shit like that. Cause if you don't, mm-hmm. but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, suicide rates gonna, oh, no, don't God, they ain't gonna keep in depression and shit. That shit gonna keep skyrocketing. Unless, well, I mean, it's over. We don't know better to get real social media. So, hey, uh, now we, we ain't gonna be. People need to seek professional help. Yeah. I mean, I, what you guys are saying, like, don't be listening to sad music. Don't be listening. You know, I mean, that's cool and all, but sometimes when you and your element, you kind of just want to add on to it. People need to not be afraid to seek the professional help that they're needing. If you have medical insurance, whether it's Medicaid, Medicare, or through your job, a lot of those insurance companies cover behavioral health at phenomenal rates. You get unlimited visits and you get them at a low dollar amount. Like, to be honest with you, I mean, yeah, we live in a pretty jacked up country, but as far as like across the board when it comes to mental health, um, a lot of these insurance companies do be really trying to help people out. Because to be honest with you, you have a better chance of seeing a therapist as many times as you want to about your, your mental than you do if you needed physical therapy, like if you broke your leg, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot harder to get physical therapy than it is to get behavioral therapy. I mean, uh, mental therapy. So people need to also take advantage of that. And even the jobs, your employers offer programs where you get a few visits for free. Like a lot of people need to see if their job has EAP programs, employees, associate partnership, something like that program. But if your job has that program, there's a good chance your job will pay for your first few visits to seeing a therapist. Um, the Black community really needs to this stigma that I was we about don't to bring that up. Help. Yeah. Like, because it is very much needed. And with the way social media is set up now, yeah, it can be rather depressing when you're seeing people that's your age or whatnot doing things that you feel like you should be doing. I recently watched this motivational speaker and, um, you know, dude came up to him. He was like, yeah, man, I try, I, I door dash. And dude is my age, 32. He was like, I just feel like I ain't where I'm at. He's like, just started he said your life just started he said your 20s you was technically still a kid you was just still learning shit in your 20s your 30s your life is just now starting you reap the benefits in your 40s we got this stigma that by now we should be married we should have a house we should be rich or we should be financially stable this that and the third but if you think about it and be rational about it if you went to college you went to college at 18 you graduated college at 22. Let's just say you went and got your master's, 24. Right there alone, you've already built up an out, outstanding amount of credit just off of your uh, student loans or whatnot. Mm. How in the hell are you going to cover and fix all, that, all those student loans in enough time before your 30th birthday? Like, let's be rational. Let's be rational with it. You're trying to pay student loans off. You're trying to get a house. And don't let you have a child in between. You're trying to raise a child. You're trying to do all this and travel the world just so you could be financially free by 30 years old. That makes zero sense. I've come to the conclusion I am no longer allowing nobody to dictate what it is 
or where I should be in my life right now. I'm not doing that no more. Yes, I'm 32. And for the longest, I always felt like I was supposed to be married with children by 30. Hell no. I ain't ready for no husband. Not today. Hell, I was barely ready for parenthood, but I kind of got thrown in there. So I'm, you know, rolling with the punches on that shit. But yeah, I got my 30s to really take this time because I'm more mature now in this time frame of my life. And I'm a lot more serious. And with me having my daughter, I'm a lot more motivated. So I'm probably going to have better benefits to reach in my 40s. Motivation. I feel you. Yeah. Yeah, you got yeah. to yeah, yeah. take your time. Hey, everybody put a time limit on shit. Like, you got to, you got that's, yeah, that's a lot of things, too. Like, that time limit. That time, because, man, I think our generation need to be reprogrammed. Because we've been... Like, mean, not reprogrammed, but the software need to be updated from what we learned from, I think, out of so year, air so many years, each generation needs to start reprogramming or upgrading the software that's been passed down. Like, you know what they got from their grandparents, what they getting to you, what we're going to get all the kids. Like, we need a lot of reprogramming, need to, need, not reprogram, but update the software, like we put in computer terms, because... That why that where the stigma come from. It been passed yeah. down so many years, so you need to be this and this by this certain age. So you see people getting into these bad marriages. You still see people taking all, all this debt, trying to pay these debts, taking all these jobs, trying to pay debts because this what they've been taught. So that's why I say you need to be. It, it need to be a, a software upgrade because if you that's why because if you don't like people still it's still gonna continue like. Like make shit okay. You can okay to take it. It's okay to, to run the race at your own pace. Like, cause if you trying to run that somebody else here, you don't. You don't no matter how hard and how hard or how fast you do it, you still ain't still gonna, ain't gonna win it. So you gotta run that shit at your pace. Like, you got to. So the other thing we need, we need, we need, we need really normalize. Like, hey, we need air air gen from generation to generation. We need a, a a software upgrade. Stop stop trying to. Like we ain't we in twenty twenty one. We trying to program our life with shit was from a program from from the eighties and the seventies and the sixties. This shit ain't gonna work that way. <laughs> this shit ain't gonna boot up the right way. It's the, the system ain't gonna run right. So shit, that, and that and that be the problem. So we we trying to run shit off old shit. Like we need we need to upgrade. We yeah. need to normalize telling people more. It's okay. We do, we but we do, we but don't hear that enough. I get more criticism than I get praise, and it could be overwhelming at times. At times, and we really need to normalize telling people it's okay. If you got a job and you're not making the type of money that you want to make, and you feel like you should, it's okay. You got time to work on it. Figure out what it is that you want to do. Take your time. Get there. Because you don't want to just jump into it. If yeah. you if you're a single parent and you're struggling, trying to make ends meet, you know it's okay. You're not the only one out there. Do the best you can. Make sure your child is happy. If you don't have a new car, it's okay. Make do with what you got. Make do with the resources that you got until you're able to get one. You like we really and truly need to normalize that because people are so quick to criticize criticize everything that you do and they will literally break your life apart yeah. piece by piece and have you feeling bad about shit that you ain't never even thought you should feel bad about somebody recently made me feel bad about the fact that i didn't have my daughter's school clothes told me i was supposed to buy them back in april and i literally burst into tears because here it is school starts in the following week and now i feel bad because you know I'm, I, I was supposed to do school shopping months ago during her birthday time. And that didn't dawn on me. This kid ain't even the same shot as she was in April. Uh-uh. What bro. This is that, mate. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I have to snap out of it sometimes. Be like, you know what? Shut, shut up. Shut up. You know what I'm about. It's I'll better be like- to buy the clothes closer to her going to school anyway because I don't even know what size. The clothes that she was wearing in April don't even fit her now. So imagine if I would have went and bought clothes. Even, even if I would have bought the clothes a size or two bigger, they still would have been too small because she grew 
fast as hell from April to today. Yeah. yeah we really have like to me. learn to tell people it is okay. Nah, we yeah. need to really start telling them people, fuck you. They need to start. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that, that too. That's on the other end. But the thing about it is this. You control what comes out of your mouth. So yeah. what are you are you going to breathe life into somebody or are you going to breathe negativity into them? So are you going to be the positive person or the negative one? We need to learn to tell people it is okay when they are, and not just our loved ones, not just the homies, not just the friends, not just the, the loved ones or anybody, anybody. You can just be in the store and you overhear somebody stressing about something like, yo, it's okay. Hey, tough times don't last long. Throw uh-uh. something out there and make somebody feel like, you know what? It will be okay. Like, for real. Because I know yeah. it be feeling like some of them we- weapons gonna prosper. I saw that meme, like, hey, God, <laughs> some of these weapons start looking like they finna prosper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't, can't talk it on. I be feeling that way sometimes, but I did you know. I ain't, I ain't, I've been down. I've been down. But I ain't been knocked out yet. So mm-hmm. I can tell anybody it's okay. I get my moments where I get nervous. Like, oh shit, rent due. And I ain't got a dime to my name. Oh shit, I need some food. I ain't got no money. Oh shit, I got to take her to school. I ain't got no gas. I kid you not, it somehow, some way it work out. I done got to the point where I try not to even stress that shit too long, for real. <laughs> I'm like, at the end of the day, man, whatever lesson I need to learn, I'm going to learn it. I'm going to learn it by any means, by whatever happened to me. It is what it is at that point. I'm coasting because I'm focused on something way bigger than this shit. Yeah. It's okay to mess up. That's one thing I wish they could teach this generation. It's okay to mess up and like, don't freak the fuck out when you fuck up. Because you can always come back. Now, if you do some like some heinous shit, then you go into jail, some shit. But it's always okay to mess up because that's the thing. Like what Rick Ross said, all you gotta do is hit that motherfucker one time, and then you won't. Oh yeah, you know that shit. Like so you can fuck time. up one time. That's all you gotta do. You can mess up many times you want, but you hit that one time where it changes your life and all that shit, and it makes you feel good about yourself, and it's like everything's good. It's worth the while to go out there and try whatever the fuck you want to do and shit. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell That's that way about you just gotta have good people around. You gotta have a nice, a nice circle around you and everything. People who gonna uplift you and call you out when you fucking up or some shit, and take um, criticism like constructive criticism, because sometimes your critics are right. So yeah. having the right people around you, you just can't have people like around you just like, well, I'm gonna uh, like shit call out yo yo no like. No, some people be slick. Hey, some people around, like I said, be around you that want to see you fail, but they want to see well. You should, you should do this. That that this ain't going right for you. You should stop doing this and do it this. And them and them be and them be the same people that have have you fucking up. Like you know, what I'm saying you gotta be, you gotta have some. I'm saying all that say you gotta have some genuine people who genuinely care about you. Like some people mm-hmm. just be around. Yeah, man. Like I be saying, like sometimes you people, people, people like people come to your life for a reason. So you better make sure the people you taking the bite from is 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 sincere and genuinely fuck with you. Yeah. Not just some people just like, <clears throat> they here for 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 a few months. They out your life, come back in and shit like that. Because some people, some people advice can fuck your whole movement up. Mm-hmm. You don't know what be going on. Well, so gotta... now where we know who to go to advice for like seriously if you get advice that, that, that'll that fuck you up that means somebody just gave their advice that you ain't even asked for for real because I know when I'm going through certain things I know who I can talk to about it like there are certain things I talk to y'all about there are certain things I may talk to my mom about there are certain things I may talk to my girls about you know so you have to be mindful of that too mindful of minding the business that pays you so to speak everybody ain't got to know everything that's going on with you like for real but if you know it's going to be genuinely there for you then yeah them the people that you need to talk to for real 
Like, yeah. you know, talk to everybody about what you got going on because all you know, they, they be ready to tell somebody else. Uh-huh. They probably don't tell somebody. You yeah. know, you heard? I got some, you know, that's where that TV coming from, for real. Mm-hmm. I had to stop doing that because I was sitting there thinking everybody was my fucking friend and they wasn't, like, for real. And it would be little stuff like social media played a hand into it. Y'all remember when I used to tell y'all how, you know, I would have these people that claim they were supporting me, but they weren't even sharing my shit. You know what I'm saying? Not that you have to, but... I mean, to be honest with you, my biggest supporters are people I don't, a lot of people I don't even know. Like when it comes, it's like a it lot really of do. a lot of my biggest sales are people I don't even know. And my very first huge party wasn't even a family member or a friend. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just keeping it one thousand, like for real. So I mean, people have to. Be- <clears throat> Of these people that they are conversing with, because you have no idea. I don't. I got some fucked up ass advice for some people that ain't really give a fuck about me, and I'm sitting up there like, yeah, yeah, eating it on up, eating it on up, just for them to turn around and be the exact person they told me I need to avoid. What shit is that? You got to mm-hmm. reach that, read that energy and that vibe. I don't need to go with people. Saying. You don't you read it. <laughs> be so good at so good at what they do. You don't even realize they don't even have your good intentions. In in your favor, in your favor at that moment, they can be yeah. so sincere, so loving, and so understanding that you're really thinking this person is in your corner. And literally the next day, it could be fuck you. <laughs> like yeah. I have been through more than one situation where I've been with that fake love, and it's been with friends and family, and it's like, hmm. And I done got to the point where I have come to the acceptance. It is okay to cut family off. It's okay to cut friends off. I will say, fuck you, whoever you may be, no matter how close we are. It was easy to do with friends. Family I had a hard time with because it was like, that's blood. You know what I'm saying? But shit, I got right, right now. Fuck you. For real, for real. <laughs> you got anything to say on this topic, uh, Drew? Huh? No. You said, said bye. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but I do agree with what Keisha said, though. About mm-hmm. um, your biggest supporters be people you don't know. Like on my photography, I get I get messages that I don't really talk about because I just keep all my blessings to myself. So they just tell me to keep on, keep doing what I'm doing and that they uplift me on it. So it makes me go further about it. Those be the best. Those are the best feelings when people you don't even know want to speak life into you. Like I kid, that is like the most fulfilling thing because it's like, damn, the hard work is finally paying off. Yeah, and no, I mean, no, I know y'all. I know y'all be up with me, but when it comes from like main photographers that's like doing their shit like in different countries and all that, that's that makes you go further. Yeah. yeah. It's saying it, it's not even like we're discrediting the fact that even yeah, because we know y'all love us and y'all want to support us, but it really feels like you're out here doing something when it's somebody not even on your radar that you would have never thought people that you look up to for real. I try to, even with you know the event planning, I try to be as supportive to a lot of the event planners in the city. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not reciprocated a lot of times but it doesn't bother me because if somebody's doing a great job who am I to be a hater about it? you know what I'm saying yeah. but like, little do they know hey I'm catching on to that I'm gonna go harder a lot of people, if you are a hater and you're listening to this you have got to understand sometimes you might be hating on the wrong motherfucker because you might be hating on somebody that thrive off that shit yeah, go on and hate, hate some more, cause I'm, 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 I'm just gonna boss up. The more you hate, the more it make me want to work hard. The more you hate, the more it make me want to grind. Oh, you want to hate on me? I'm gonna post this just to piss me off. Yep. Life's good. A lot of people need to let that shit burn, let that shit ride, and just be happy for folks. 
for real, for real, because sometimes you don't even realize your hate is actually fueling their success. Hell yeah. And no W's is small. Everything, any milestone that you do on your journey to success is a big win. Don't let nobody say that, oh, that's just little. That's little. I don't give a fuck if you got 10 likes. It's 10 more likes than you had before the end of shit, so. Yeah, niggas with little dicks still got love around here, so ain't no such thing as too little. I know that had nothing to do with nothing. I just thought I'd nah, kiss it <laughs> 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 Uh, look, that nigga with little dick that's all love around his bitch. All W's. There's no such thing as a small W. <laughs> hey, boy, we you talking about motivation. You got to talk about dingling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, continue. <laughs> ain't had in a while, y'all. My bad. My bad. But nah, it's just keep on grinding. Keep on. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. Hey, man. Fuck it. Hey, Fuck it. Things happen. Oh. Fuck it. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. I can't talk to the way I added that trans birthday thing. What happened? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, keep on grinding. Keep on, you know, collecting yours, man. Don't let Here these influences make y'all feel lesser than. Oh, that yeah. girl, you can't take, if you take me on a date to a chain restaurant, you oh, can't hell. respond. You know what's crazy, though? She ain't cute. Damn. <laughs> I wasn't going there with it. But no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought I was going with that. But you know what? <laughs> After our queens ripped her to shreds, she tried to change up. Well, you can take me to a taco truck. Hey, stop lying. <laughs> Somebody's like, stop lying. If you can't even go to an olive bar, what the fuck make you think he going to be able to take you to a taco truck? Like, for real. That shit crazy. I've never had a problem with chain restaurants. Except Applebee's. And the only reason I have a problem with Applebee's, it ain't because they cheap. They nasty. That's it. Like, if you ask me where I want to go eat, I'm more than likely going to name a chain restaurant. I wouldn't dare say, I want to get you Le Bistro, Le Cafe, Le... What? Ooh, Chris. Nice. Ooh, Chris. Ooh. I think that fucking weasel off. <laughs> That's like... I, and I hate that men feel that they have to live up to this stigma. But I hate even more that y'all think a lot of us are like that. That's the crazy part to me. Like, I really do feel like that you guys think that a lot of us women operate like these social influencers. I really do think that. These women talk about $40, this, and you got to buy that, and my nails cost this. Man, please. Like, come on. A real hardworking woman that works with her hands, she ain't got no $180 nails. Come on. Oh, how much they be costing? Yeah, oh yeah, they. Like, come on, like, and them shit costs twenty dollars. Uh, 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 actual <laughs> woman that has a job Monday through Friday has children, has a home to maintain. I guarantee you, they ain't sitting up there needing five hundred dollar headdos all the time. For real, they're not. They're not. No, man, try. <laughs> Trav. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Same but what I'm saying, Leah. Hey, Mike. Mike. What's up, man? Who the fuck is that? He's That's... doing this shit. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? Mike, what? <laughs> what's she say? What'd she say? What happened? Mike, what's the um the Casamigo drink? What's the brand of that? Casamigo. That's the brand? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see what y'all, y'all go on every platform. Damn. Let's see what y'all. It's gonna be on all different platforms. Hey, my new artist right here, man. We dropping Friday, my boy. I can't wait. (laughs) (laughs) We friends. We friends. 
Well, how do five? Well, yeah, about five hundred dollars. Well, three hundred dollars. That's a lot of money for how do. Nah, when well, you do the nail Ooh. shit, the shell about what six, like sixty dollars at I least. You females ain't doing stuff like that. The, the main thing that we really be trying to keep up with is our nails and our feet, for the most part. Like for real. And honestly speaking, if you don't even wear like the acrylics, the long nails, it don't even cost all of that. But y'all don't see these folks on social media show these stupid ass receipts. And y'all think we want that. Y'all done seen these folks sit up there and talk about how they got to have this, that, and the third. They got to see these people glorify sugar daddies and being a sugar baby. And a lot of these people ain't even 30 yet. Mm. I was so disappointed in y'all because I be thinking to myself, y'all, when y'all describe how women are, I'm like, y'all not describing grown ass women. Not no grown, no real grown ass woman. A lot of that materialistic stuff don't mean shit to a real woman, like for real. And it's a lot more real women than it is materialistic women out there, like dead ass, dead ass. Hey, we just pointing out the bad ones. For whatever, I promise you, a real woman, if she got herself a good man, she gonna love everything about that man. She gonna love that man. <laughs> Men, y'all got so many options. It's not even funny. It's not even funny how many options y'all got. So honestly speaking, we know that. So when we find come across a motherfucker that really want to be with us, want to love us, we going to mm, hold on to your ass the best we can. Like for real, that's a real woman. But all this stigma about having to buy this and we got to go here, this, that, and the third. Mm-mm. Like seriously, a lot of us ain't on that shit. A lot of us don't even care about that shit. Like for real. Yeah. And a lot of people, even with the BBL conversation we had, the BBL is not necessarily something I would think social media influence. The thing about it is social media brought it to light. And it's something that women want to do to make themselves feel better. What is the harm in wanting to make yourself feel better? Like, for real. If they had surgeries out there that, if they had secret surgeries that would make y'all dick twice as big, would y'all get it? No, I mean, hell no. Why? <laughs> because it's a no. I don't get no complaints. I mean, it's, it's, true. it's just no. Look, y'all keep it all the way real. If there was a reasonable surgery and all you had to do was go to Mexico and you could get a bigger dick, y'all wouldn't do that. No, hell no. Y'all wouldn't do that. Uh, no, don't ask me no more. <laughs> you, might have a, you know, I don't even want to know. Would you still sit down? <laughs> Mike, Trav, y'all wouldn't do that? Mm-mm. I got to lose 80 more pounds. Y'all wouldn't, any, y'all wouldn't do any plastic surgery? No. No, nah, I wouldn't do no plastic surgery. Right. Even plastic if you do get that shit, that shit will fuck your shit Ipo, up. Uh, gastric bypass, none of that. Nah. I, I, I'll get my knees done. I can't you talking about getting taller? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so y'all say y'all wouldn't do any of that? To make yourself feel totally, better, you wouldn't get, get you wouldn't get um, what you call it um, hair installations in your beard. Hell no, hell fill no. it out. I want, I want, I want enjoy myself. Y'all wouldn't do anything to enhance. Y'all wouldn't pay for anything extra to enhance any imperfection about y'all body. I know no. y'all are lying because y'all are some of the men are the more insecure than us women a lot of times. Uh, 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 it really is. I mean, but if you got but somebody yeah, who desires you, you and shit, if you could get knees matter. to make you taller, would you buy them? I ain't gonna lie, we yeah. I'm gonna play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> That's for basketball, goddamn it. That ain't for no women, though. Man, please, you gotta actually have the talent before you even get the knees for I the know, make sure. Though. You been like, got you been <laughs> off the knees right. and that ain't even dribble the ball. You wasted knees. Talk about I'm an athlete. Yeah, <laughs> an athlete. Yes, sir. But nah, I mean, you shouldn't be faulted for wanting to enhance your body, or you know, because honestly speaking, going to the gym ain't gonna do everything. It ain't like the gym works great for some people. It don't do as good for some people, like for real. So she shouldn't have to feel bad about wanting to get that done. She shouldn't have to think everybody gonna judge her about wanting to get something done with her body. A lot of women do that shit for themselves. I told y'all in the chat. I prefer compliments from women than y'all than men, period. 
A man's going to tell me I'm beautiful no matter how I look. Like, seriously, I go to the gas station looking just like this. I'm pretty sure. Reef on nigga, smile, baby girl. You look pretty nice, baby. Man, whatever. But if a female like, oh my God, you look so pretty. Then I'm going to know I look good. For real. Dead mm-hmm. ass. Like, I don't do any of my vanity. I don't ever do any of my vanity for the men out there in the world. Unless I'm dating somebody. Of course, I want to look nice for them. But, yeah. I gave you a compliment. You ain't like what I said. <laughs> what you say? No, the uh, orange, orange striped shirt. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, you told me I look like a zebra. No, I said like a water break pack. What did you say? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, like I told you to go to hell. <laughs> yeah. That was a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> I look good. Good. That was a good day for me. I was so good day for me. But that has nothing to do with the point I'm trying to make. Like, for real, I think, I mean, I hate to say it, but y'all be having us women all fucked up, like real women all fucked up. And I really wish y'all would sit back and evaluate some of the things that you think about a woman and ask yourself, is that actually how a real woman would operate? Like, for real. And talk to actual real deal women. Like, not these women that sit up there and they're influenced by the social media influence. Talk to real women that's living real life. Like, for real, for real. And get their input on life itself. Talk to older women and get their input on life themselves. Because y'all, what y'all seen on the internet, a lot of that shit from generation, what is it, X, Y, Z, whichever one it is. And we, what, Millennials? Yeah. Like, real. Yeah. yeah, we millennials. To millennials to millennials. Y'all are comparing millennials to a whole nother generation that don't even think the way we do. Like, for real. If you ask a 22 year old female what she's looking for in a man, I promise you, it's probably not going to match what you ask my ass, who's 10 years older than her. Hmm. I mean, I. People mm-hmm. like what they like. And if you want to get a BBL, if people want to get BBLs and all that, they should do, have the right to do it. Now, if you just want it, people have the right to, you know, but you ain't going to bash nobody for getting what they want to get done and enhance and all that. I just say, I'd rather have somebody who likes me for genuinely for who I, I am and shit, for my imperfections and all that shit. That makes it worthwhile. They're like, damn. Believe it or not, if though, people want, I'm but, about that are married. A lot of people say what? Girls are married. Got a husband already. They husband the one that told him go. Yeah, go ahead, baby. That's what you want to do. Yeah, See, if they want to do that, do that. You be having because you're thinking we're doing it to get other people. A lot of women that be getting these surgeries done already got a man. No cap. Almost every female that I personally know has had the surgery done. They're married or engaged. Okay. And sometimes they'll probably get it, just spice it up. You say, baby, what if I get a fat ass? Hey, girl, go get a fat ass. So you clap no, my cheeks and shit. Doing it because they look, man, my stomach flabby. I done had two kids. Look, man, my boobs is hanging all the way down here. All that breastfeeding I did. I done lost my ass because, believe it or not, like for real, mm-hmm. I boobs, like for real, right after having a kid, your boobs get really big, your waist get really small. And then, like nine months later, that shit go in reverse. No cap. Mm. Like y'all don't, but that's that goes into y'all trying to, you know, ex- trying to understand the concept of a real woman, and y'all not women yourselves. That's why I keep telling. I'm, I'm telling y'all, this is from people who I actually hang with. I got a homegirl. She just graduated nursing school. Dad ass her husband. He's like, you know. Now that you're done with school or whatever, you still considering your surgery? Go ahead. I make sure everything taken. You know what I'm saying? There's that's usually the narrative a lot of times for the older women that are getting these surgeries done because they didn't live like they didn't have these kids. Kids have destroyed their bodies, mm-hmm. and you're just trying to tighten up in places that the gym can't. It ain't about mm-hmm. trying to impress anybody else. It ain't even trying to spice up the bedroom a lot of these people are doing it for themselves and they have spouses that support that true it probably yeah. be for that but the man gonna look at it and say hey she got some new ass 
Now we gonna be like he sucks. It's his ass. A real man. Exactly. I mean, that's his ass. It's, a, it's, a, it's something else. It's so. just, you know, I mean, yeah, he he benefits from it, but I'm pretty sure a real man that really loves their woman, it wouldn't have made him you no, know, it wouldn't have made him no never mind. Because y'all don't even be caring about shit like that for real. What like, I do. A lot of times y'all don't, be, y'all don't care about food plus. Y'all don't be caring about like bellies and shit like that. Y'all don't be caring about ass shapes for real. I mean, yeah, y'all like a woman with a big ass, but if she got a flat ass, but a beautiful face and a spirit, yeah, yeah, go. Y'all don't be caring about a lot of this shit that we be caring about. For real, for real. It depends on the man. It, it, cause, and I know this for a fact, because y'all go on and on and on about how y'all love natural women, this, that, and the third. Y'all don't be giving a fuck about half the shit I sit in the mirror and be like, damn, I can use something there, I can use something there. Y'all don't give a fuck about that shit for real. Do you? I ain't gonna always. <laughs> 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 and I'm not, here's the thing. Y'all are not gonna step here and tell me y'all give a flying fuck about a belly and Mike and Trav love BBW. What we saying is, on, well, uh, wait, 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 it's, it's, it's what we saying is, females, y'all, look, you to talk to look. like, come on, one of you, look, 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 it's like this. Let's just say, let's just say you go out with a fat, a fat, 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 fat nigga, <laughs> and let's just say you know what I'm saying, you like big nigga. Let's just say this nigga say, you know, I'm gonna get my shape together. You done had sex with this fat dude so many times. I'm that you know to... that this listen, 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 the spark. No, no, you gotta do it. If you're gonna make a if you're gonna make an example out of it, make it with something that I would actually date. All right, let's just say a, a out of shape a daughter misu with a big ass gut. I wouldn't date nobody like that. I ran from somebody at a hotel. Y'all remember the story about me running in there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, let's be real. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's say Mike with Fokito. Let's say Mike with Fokito. <laughs> <laughs> Mike was I'm out of still, shape. He had on keto. He was. He I'm was still, big Mike is my type. That's the thing. I have a particular type of big man that I used to date. I mean, that I that I would date. Like, and like for real. Like y'all saw my uh, y'all saw my ex. That's usually right across the board what I date. Tall, heavy, <laughs> offensive lineman built. Okay. So, what well, I basically what I was saying is really beautiful. I, Let's just do this. Let let's just say this. Let's just say when you a fat nigga and you lose all your weight, you get different responses and shit from probably from your spouse and all that shit. Because right now, as I lost weight, all the girls that like me at my size for some reason are just acting more. Boom! It's like a new spark. You know what I'm saying? Probably they they don't count. These are women that because they're not your woman. They are not your woman. So yes, they're gonna have a problem with your change. They were interested. They not your woman. <laughs> like, bro, you giving them too much. That's the problem. You giving them too much play, too much power in this situation. I told you before, when you first went on your journey, any bitch that gets you that you tried to talk to, any bitch that you try to talk to before you start losing weight and you end up with her after you lose the weight, I'm not gonna like her. I'm not gonna like her at all. Like dead ass. Because you feel like they didn't like me before when I found exactly. Sandy. Exactly. So I'm like, saying that. like that's why you you, you got to be mindful with these examples that you use with me. No, I'm saying I'm talking about the girls who like me even when I was out of shape, a chicken fry eating motherfucker. That's what I'm okay. saying. <laughs> they got jealous because they, you know what they think because they know these younger stupid girls is gonna try to get you, and I don't know how they, I don't know how they see you, but they they're probably thinking they're gonna be in competition with a whole nother group of women. Uh-huh. That's there. That's what it is. That's really as simple as what it is. It's checkers, not chess. We already uh-huh. have it bad enough as we already competing with ourselves as it is. The last thing we want to do is compete with younger, especially a, a bigger girl. Now they thinking you getting skinnier, so now you're gonna start converting over to the skinnier people. Now I gotta compete with skinny bitches over this nigga. No, nah. I already had to fight other big bitches. Now I gotta fight skinny bitches. <laughs> That's their mind frame. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. They know a whole different demographic of bitches finna come after you right now, Mike. So yes, they tight. They tight right now. Like dad at just like you ever met somebody that was broke and then they ended up having money and then they acting all different now. Like they ain't never been broke. 
chill out. <laughs> they start mm-hmm. hanging with different people. I'm not saying you would do that, but mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people have that mentality like they ain't used to nothing. Yeah. Honestly, that's why I said if you end up with a bitch that you tried to talk to in the past, you better not ever tell me you tried to talk to her and she ignored you. And now she tried to get on your dick because you done lost some weight. I'm never going to like this chick. Because one thing I know, she's wasting your time. If she really liked you, she would have liked you for all of you. Even 100 pounds ago. So that's oh, just that. man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I, don't, I wouldn't dare be with no man that want to be with me because I done lost some weight. I swear. I wouldn't <laughs> Be with no <laughs> nigga that want me because I lost some weight or I came up on some money. Ain't no way at all. If I end oh, up with tomorrow, I gotta end up with a, a rich nigga. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Mm-hmm. I end up with a rich nigga, my equal or some shit like that. If I lose weight tomorrow, that's not gonna change my preference in niggas. But what I like, I like what I like. And now that I'm older, I'm starting to like all oh, kind of body shape, small, big, you know, they still tall, but you know, and that's just keeping it 1,000, but the type of person I like, it's not going to change. It's not. And I wouldn't mm-hmm. even want somebody that would want a new me. Because all I, all I feel like is if I did anything to change who I am physically, all I'm doing is just making enhancements, that's all. I'm still the same old foul mouth, loud, ignorant ass Keisha. And that's the person I want to be when I come home. Yeah. I ain't never switching off the big girls, though. That's for damn sure. Well, you know what I'm saying? Um, they, act, they probably acting different, but then again, women pick up on stuff, too. Who yeah. say you think they're acting different to damn self? So? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, but now the conversation is all about Tito. That's because that's your lifestyle right now. I can't relate. <laughs> like, for real, I can't relate. Like, you know, if I come around you and you want to talk about keto all the time, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. Like, I don't care. <laughs> like, you like cars? Yeah, but that's your lifestyle now. Like, <laughs> true stupid, bro. What? <laughs> Stupid, being bro, honest, bro. you know what I'm saying, and that might be why they acting funny now because you're talking about something they don't give two shits about right now. Wow. Yeah, and I found this zero car tortilla in the store. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man, I found that fruit for the first time. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Oh my god! I went to. I promise you, dude. That's why I'm too eggy. <laughs> I know. I mean, that could be why they acting funny now too, because they just can't relate to you right now, Mike. You're on a journey they they ain't even on, and if they really want you, they'll hop on the train with you. Shit, I'll make you a keto friendly dinner. Just come on over. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's what I would do if I was really into somebody. And I really, you know, if I was really invested in that person, then yeah, like if I was invested in Mike, yeah, I, I'll cook for you and I'll make sure it's keto friendly. If they ain't doing that, man, they just having attitudes for no fucking reason. That's on them, Mike. Don't worry about that shit for real. You, yeah, nah, they own supporter. They, they supporter. just try, that's it. That's that underground hate shit that we were just talking about for real. Trying to make nah, I you never said. About nah, you they ain't never on. Um, they ain't acting funny. They've been supportive. That's what I was saying. Earlier, you said they were acting funny. No, I said they were acting different because the whole lust and the spark of it. They said, "Damn, you look good" and all that shit. That's what I was saying. Mm-hmm. I won't say they're acting funny. They I was just saying they should think you look good. Nah, I mean, I mean that's just that's just me though. That's me. That's I mean, I have. I've been around people that have had nothing and they, like I said, I told y'all this, that I've been around people that was still living in their house with their mama and I wasn't judgmental about it or none of that. And I will be supportive. I wouldn't be no girlfriend or whatnot, but I'd be a good friend to them and they would be so genuinely appreciative of it that when they did get their place, I kid you not, there's like within the past two years, there have been three people. I was the very first guest in their brand new home, like dead ass mm. that I was, you know, talking to at the time because, you know, I get it. 
Like, you know, I get it. Life don't move the same way for everybody. And hell, I mean, I'm not going to try to sit up here like I've just been on my own since 18. No, the fuck I haven't. <laughs> like, for Which real. Which verse? She liked the whole song. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean. On the third verse. What happened? <laughs> Yeah, I'm breaking up. Hold on, hold on. I can't hear you. I'm about to let this restaurant close. All right. What restaurant? I'm about to go back to JB's. That fish is so goddamn good. See, close. What time to close? 10. Man, I'm probably mad at you going out there like I know how you get that shit. I ain't going to go there. I'm mad as hell. Yeah, yeah, like 15 minutes. What the fuck? That shit, you piss me off. <laughs> what, Ray he Robbins? He gonna start shit. Man, look, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Goddamn, where the fuck is this up here? Hey, uh, God damn. This chill up here, but I don't know. He's gonna lock door early. Uh, shit. <laughs> I ain't gonna kill the clock for this. Shit, that fucker. <laughs> you on the clock, from? Andrew? Huh? You on the clock? No, sir. Uh, Somebody outside. Uh, Take that damn weasel off. Uh, Trap. Yo. My foot with the boy. I'll be out tomorrow. Oh, you see it. Oh. Yeah, it's all good. How long have we been recording? Shit, over an hour. Hey, Mike. Yo. I let old girl hit a song. She said, I like that. You doing <laughs> music now? Leave a scale. Who she asking to do music? You. That's a, I always do music. That's the evil. I'm trying to get them boys committed. Oh, right? my bad. I'm asking Drew. I'm sorry. My bad, bro. <laughs> 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 I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I thought a, that was Drew. Drew got a fire ass on coming out Friday. You say you're gonna drop Friday on our stream platform. He sounded rich. Are you doing music? Y'all don't tell me nothing now. He tried, <laughs> he tried to play you. Listen to me. Look, we tried to play you the OG version and you didn't want to listen to it. Yeah, you didn't want to listen to it. What are you talking about? <laughs> you it's we going to you after that game, but. We first came with our last and we tried to play the song. Man, like, oh, I was on tequila that night. Why would y'all do that? Why would y'all do that? Why would y'all do that? Why would y'all? Why would y'all do that? We, we y'all brought that to yourselves. Why in the fuck would you ask me to do something that serious, drunk as fuck? And if so, like, yeah, you say you're gonna drop. You finally got mixed and master. Yep, Friday. Hey. I just want my credit. That's all. <laughs> y'all missed a hell of a game night, but y'all, I'm having another party, and y'all are definitely invited. But y'all gotta go with the theme. What game night? Theme? I ain't, I ain't sent it out yet. The theme is Beyonce. Yeah. Oh, they favorite Beyonce. <laughs> fellas gotta dress as their favorite Jay Z. <laughs> fellas gotta dress as their favorite Jay Z. Huh? Yeah, females are gonna dress like they favorite Beyonce. Fellas gotta dress like they favorite Jay Z. I'm dressing up like Kanye with the mask on. <laughs> then you're not coming through the door because you don't know how to follow directions. I just told you what, what the theme was, and you're gonna do your own thing. That's okay. I'm dead ass. Dead joking, man. Dress like 50 and 05. <laughs> you will not be coming in. <laughs> The theme is Jay's. I mean, the thing is a Beyonce theme party, but I'm gonna let the men come in as their favorite uh, Jay Z. You said we missed the uh, game night. What game are you talking about? No, I said my next game night. Oh, damn, let me start this. Let me get a hot tub. Place your order for this new world 